Kevin Levesque, one half of a whole. You are now tuned in to Rough House TV. We got a big hot one for you today, uh, interviewing uh, a big dog down in Lucha Underground. It's wrestling uh, mania just taking over the world out there in the West Coast. But before we jump into that, um, if you guys are not subscribed to this channel, uh, please go down and hit that subscribe button. Uh, and then right next to that subscribe button, go ahead and click on the bell. That will give you 100% full access to this channel and let you know when we drop that hot-ass bomb content like we're getting ready to do right now. My boy, DG, a.k.a. Dave Goyce, holding it down for the West Coast. What's up, partner? What's up, guys, man? I'm so stoked to be here with my other half in Cincinnati. Haven't done this in quite a while, doing a three-way Skype, so this is actually cool. And you guys, I don't even need to introduce you. This is Marty Koskis, a.k.a. Marty the Moth Martinez from Lucha Underground. Marty, the floor is yours. What's up? Dude, thanks for having me on. I'm stoked to be on this show. David, you've been telling me about this show for a little bit of time, so I'm stoked I'm finally here. Well, we're about to jump off into this. We got a bunch of questions, uh, but since David is more so the, uh, the expert in this field, uh, I got a lot of questions for you myself. Obviously, they're not uh, going to be the typical <laughs> they're not going to be your typical questions, so they're going to be coming from the lane of the unlearned, such as myself. Now, I'm used to wrestling, but I'm more into the uh, – I remember that fat black dude from Africa back in the day had the, the <laughs> star on his chest and fat shit and all that. I'm used to him and Randy uh, Savage and Macho Camacho, and that's my lane. But uh, David, uh, more so, he's, he's the guy. So we're going to start off with David and let him take over. What's good, Dave? Okay, Marty, we've been wanting to do this for a grip ass time, man. I'm excited. And I got the mask on, brother. And you got the mask. And you got the mask. Hold on, hold on, hold on. If you want, I got mask now, too. I've got to see. We got Drago. Yes. We got Phoenix. Right? No, that's not Phoenix. Phoenix is over there. That one's still got the blood on it, though. Sorry, I had to show you my mask, too. That, dude, you gotta you gotta do it, man. I have to rock the mask on this one. I, I think my viewers would be more happier seeing this than my fucking ugly face, anyway. So Should we I got rock his drago mask on. That that that's a cool ass drago. That's a cool. If you guys are not watching Lucha Underground Wrestling, go catch it up on Netflix. You're gonna see this crazy bastard in in action. He is so over with the fans, it's crazy, and he's a bad guy. He's a heel. And I'm the bad guy. It's good to be the bad guy. It always is funner being the bad guy. All right. Now, before, guy, we're going back to before we get into these crazy questions, right, what are you doing now, right right now, besides getting ready to uh, record for season four? Right now, obviously getting ready to record for season four. Currently, I am shooting a movie called Good Enough. Um, you'll see that out soon. I'm in pre-production for a space odyssey that's coming up. So I've been doing a lot of acting and then, uh, my supplement company. Um, like I said, I'm getting in shape for season four. So I got my V slim here. I'm using drop 15 pounds off of that. Uh, just helping people get in better shape and then better health period. So that's what I, that's my full-time job now is working this supplement company and acting and wrestling. So now that's what's filled up all my time, and it's been pretty much a dream come true. Kevin, I'm sure you have a lot of questions about the supplements that he uses or anything about his company. Feel free oh, to ask, man. Oh, yeah. I, I was getting ready to tag him just now when he said that. So um, no secret about this. I'm not obviously really big into the wrestling genre. So uh, I always try to – when I hear something, I try to flip that to make it more – complimentary to what I'm doing. So whatever you're doing, if you know, you say supplements and I'm trying I now start thinking about things that are common in the world in which I evolve in. So, uh, what, when did you, what kind of supplements uh, company is this? And when did you get this started? I started this about a year ago. Um, I had this disease called Lyme disease, unfortunately. 
Um, so basically I can't absorb anything. Um, it's my stomach. It, if I try to go to GNC or wherever, go to get something from bodybuilding.com, I don't absorb it very well. So I buy it and I get to use it. So I buy the stuff. It's really expensive stuff. And I don't still get to use it very much. So I was trying to find something that can, I can bypass that somehow. And uh, so I actually found this company. I partnered up with them. Um, they use a thing called liposomes. It actually goes to bypass that digestive system. And it actually recognizes the liposome in you and uh, makes it actually so I can absorb stuff. So finally, I get to actually get stuff that works for me rather than 98% piss, expensive piss, by the way. I got you. Uh, actually, they made me feel really good. It's been the best year of my life, honestly, as far as health, because with Lyme disease, I can't think straight. I'm tired all the time. I actually drink like nine energy drinks a day, and uh, I know that's not healthy for me. So I felt better with this for a very long time, and I'm actually stoked as hell because we just came out with the weight loss product that actually I just dropped 15 pounds the last three weeks from it. Nice. So, so when you – so when it comes to the the supplement side of it, how how did you figure out how to formulate your product? Who helped you formulate that? And because a lot of guys that are actually in what me and David, where we came from, um, where we are right now, there's a lot of people that have blown up as far as YouTube and fitness, and they got their own supplement lines and clothing lines and whatnot. And there are there are more of us than them that don't have that that were actually aspiring to have that, that were wondering, like, how in the hell do they formulate these products? Who do they talk to? How expensive was it? Was this a headache for you to start? Was this one of those, I don't know how I'm going to get here? And when you got there, like, how did you, what helped you get to that point to want to make your own supplement company? How hard was it to formulate these products? Uh, the good thing about it is I just find people that are smarter than myself. There you go. Which when it comes to formulating supplements, it makes it a lot easier because I, I probably couldn't do half of what he did. So I found a doctor named Tracy Gibbs. He's the one that came and formulated this stuff up. Um, I just basically partnered with his brand, and um, I'm getting this stuff out. I'm using this in, into my brand as well. And because I can feel it working, I feel good about sharing it with other people. Gotcha. So, and that's how it's kind of been working for me. And for, as far as... It, like you said, it's hard to get get this whole thing, get it all started and get going. But really, if you just keep at it, it's going to get there. Just most people don't keep going and make things happen. And unfortunately, they quit before they actually get to what they're actually trying to get. Uh, right, right. Trying to get to. Well, so, so the easiest way is actually believing in the product 110%, which you do. So tell the people what you've been doing to go out of your way to promote it. You've been doing like weight loss challenges and shit, right? Yeah, I got the Check Yourself Fitness Group. If you're not part of it, go to my website, martingasouts.com slash check yourself. Say, say that again, Marty, so we can, we can put this on the screen. What is it again? It's martingasouts.com slash check yourself. Gotcha. Uh, it's actually um, a fitness competition I'm doing. Uh, you're going to win some free prizes, win some money. And basically all it is is we have a uh, Facebook group that we help people. We can put in diets stuff we put in workouts we put in um suggestions on basically get you get your health back to where it needs to be um we've got people in here that are uh npc pros um we've got people in here that have that barely get off the couch and try to do a push-up but they're seeing good results because it's a constant reminder hey how much water did you drink what did you eat today it's helped on me because uh it's the weekend and it was the super bowl and, and i ate like crap and then i had to go on there and tell everybody i ate like crap and then i felt bad and so now i'm at the gym a little bit harder that week because i was just held accountable for it so if you're in the, try to get in shape go to my website listen somewhere around here go to the check yourself fitness group and let's get in shape together because I'm getting in shape for season four coming up here in just a few weeks. Now, the good thing is, regardless, whatever thing you decide to promote, we're going to drop it on the bottom. So all they got to do is click the show me more, hit the links, and we'll do all the hard work for them so that you're very easy to follow. A wrestling type of question is also fitness related, okay? What do you do cardiovascular so you're not blown out up on the ring? A lot of explosive movements. In fact, I would probably spend two, three days at the actual gym itself. Um, I have a mini gym at my house right now, uh, but I'm doing a lot of burpees, a lot of sprints, um, a lot of, so 
some drills I created when I was uh, more of an athlete. I, when I was in high school, I played football, wrestling, track, and lacrosse. So I do a lot of the drills I did there. And I get in the ring as much as I can. If I, it's totally different. When I first started wrestling, I just figured I'd go to the gym like I always do. And I do my hour on the treadmill. That doesn't work for what I do because I'm jumping, I'm ducking, I'm getting punched in the face. And then I got to look up and make sure no one's going to kick me in the face next. I got to be able to look around and be able to move around my body freely. So I'm doing a lot of body movements um, and uh, a lot of explosive movements like those burpees and those sprint drills, those drills that I would normally even do on a team activity. Okay. How long, how long, how long have you been doing this? Like the whole, did you, did you wrestle in high school or was it one of them like me growing up watching Roddy Roddy Piper and whoever else get in, was this one something that intrigued you or how did you, what got you into doing this? Uh, I actually, my grandpa was watching at his house when I was a little kid and I just saw four guys beating up one dude and that pissed me off for some reason. <laughs> and uh, so I remembered that and I, then I started watching it and I found wrestling. It was probably like, I came away later, like 14, 15, something like that. And some people were like, I was born six years old and I was watching wrestling. Nope, not me. I was in the late nineties and the Monday night wars that were going on. And uh, I actually started wrestling in high school because I thought I was going to be jumping off the ropes of body slamming people. And uh, that, was a, that was a shift when they gave me a thing of headgear and some spandex. So. But I've been doing this wrestling here for, it'll be 15 years in October. Um, but I did wrestle in high school, folk style, and it's one hell of a sport to be getting the shape for. Now, to keep Kevin up to date, because Kevin doesn't follow the wrestling thing, Marty was on MTV's, what season was that of Tough Enough? Uh, I remember watching that. I remember watching that. And um, Marty was on it. Matter of fact, there was a guy named Matt something. I can't remember his name. And I actually saw him. Matt uh, Morgan. Matt, no, it wasn't Matt Morgan. It's another guy named Matt. And I actually saw him, uh, and he was in like the this the big show now type stuff. He was like wrestling with um, – What's this guy's name? The Undertaker dude. He was wrestling with them. And he actually came off of that Tough Enough show or whatever, that Tough show on MTV. He actually came off of that. And I remember watching that season. And I'm like, damn. And then I seen him on the real big TV. So I remember that Tough, I remember that tough season. Well, what season were you on, Marty? Uh, I think it was five or something. It was the reboot. They called it the reboot. So I don't know if that was five or six or something, but they called it the reboot. with was called Steve Austin. Now, Kevin, Marty was the heavy favorite to win that season. I remember watching the I'm, – I'm a wrestling nerd. Uh, I, I own it big time. Watched all the seasons. He was very heavily to win that, and then he got hurt. Speaking of, what is – what is uh, how, have you been plagued a lot by injuries to do this, uh, doing this? Because I – now, now, the reason why I ask you this is because y'all do some really crazy shit, flipping off of uh, top ropes and landing on tables – and a lot of us, and I'm just going to be very frank with you, a lot of us believe that what you're doing is 100% fake. you got to be an athlete to do it. But a lot of people like me, I think, you know, wrestling is it's for entertainment. It's not real. And they kind of, like, put a perforation in the table so you don't break your snap your back when you hit it. Stuff like that. We always thought that, like, you cut yourself with razors, maybe the fake blood type. Because you remember back in the day when they had cage matches, they would bleed and they had with face all full, you know, full of blood and shit. Injury wise, what's the deal with like how much how real stuff? Look at that. He's showing cracks in his skull. Uh yeah, this is from a match I had Lucha Underground. This is seven staples in my head right here. Um, this is from a steel chair that was just thrown into my face. It hit here and then the blood just started coming down. Uh David could probably show you that. It's actually on my Absolutely. Uh, on my YouTube, which is youtube.com slash Mr. Martin Um, I, I have a web of mass destruction match. This is seven staples. I broke my ribs in August uh, of last year. I broke my ankle on that show, WWE Tough Enough with Stone Cold Steve Austin. So none of those were fake. I wish they were fake. The steel on my ankle says they weren't very fake. I can show you. I got Ninja Turtle shoes on right now, but, but <laughs> it's still real steel in my ankle right now, and my ribs are better. 
Um, here, here's the thing. It's, it's predetermined. Do they go in knowing who's going to win or lose? Yes. Everything they do, is it fake? I've seen some crazy shit. I've seen 400-pound men. I've watched Marty bleed like a fucking sift, and that's not fake. Let me clarify this. I got mad respect for wrestlers, whether it's Lucha Underground, WCW, uh, whatever the other one is, WWE. Is that still around? WWF and WWE and all that? Is that yeah, WWE is so around. I got mad respect for them guys because, one, I've seen Stone Cold Steve Austin in person, and he is built like a brick shit house. I've also seen, uh, I've seen The Rock uh, in person in passing, uh, who used to wrestle. Um, so there, I've, I've, seen, so I know I've watched you. I mean, I've seen this on TV. So you guys got to be athletic to, to particularly do this particular line of work. So I'm not saying that aspect is wrong. So in that vein, the the type of training, do you deadlift? Do you do any kind of like? Uh, do you would you would you say that you would incorporate bodybuilding style training or? power lifter style training in your particular regimen? Oh, absolutely. It's, it's bodybuilder functional style kind of training in order just to keep those basic muscles moving the way they're supposed to be. Um, and with me, I like to do more of a rep heavy rather than a uh, weight heavy because I just need my muscles to look good naked. I don't need it to be super strong. Right. Um, so, and the biggest guy I'm going to pick up is 400 pounds. So, and, and there's not very many of those rounds. Is that an assisted pickup? Because I know when you got to do those, when you pick them up and you do that suplex, well, I don't know what the thing and you and they fall backwards, they kind of jump with you while you pick them up. So it's kind of like an aerobic assisted type lift, maybe? Hopefully. Some people Hopefully. are good like that, some people aren't. So, <laughs> like, like I said, it's, it's really just a soap opera for dudes that we have to do live, but we don't get any second chances on where – Tom Cruise, everyone never complains, yo, you're not a secret agent, for reals. Right. Uh, and complain, <laughs> um, about, but he gets 17 takes to do one fall down from a shot uh, from a gun. Um, we get to do it one time. We have to do a live with no wires and no pads. So um, really, it's just an athletic story that we're telling uh, that hurts like hell. Uh, you would hope somebody like that would jump. Uh, sometimes you get that, sometimes you don't. Uh, but we're in there working together, hopefully, um, to kind of make the best story we can out of things. Marty, would you consider yourself a base because you're a heavier athlete? Yeah, absolutely. Well, especially neutral underground, these guys like to jump around, do 17 flips, and then do something. I, yeah, I definitely would consider myself a baser. I've never asked you, but who was your stiffest opponent you've ever dealt with and who was the most easiest where it was just like, Oh my God, I absolutely love this. This was nice. Ooh, stiffest. See, I've been actually pretty lucky because, okay. no, nope, I know the answers now. Uh, stiffest. When Mil Muertes punches you, you feel that. When Mil Muertes does anything to you, you feel that. Um, and it looks fantastic because it's real. Um, Prince Puma is a guy that is so smooth and so, so finesse like, um, I feel those punches very much as well, but he was one of those that you could just smooth and go do anything. He could do 17 flips in the air and come down and throw me this way. Mill was more in your face. I'm going to hurt you, punch you kind of guy where I feel his. So when they, when they actually, when they actually hit you and they're not taking nothing off, he's actually slugging you in the face. That's stiff. That's working stiff. Yes. Is that is that something that the, is industry approved? Like they say you got to like it, would they approve? Like, yeah, when you know, Martin, when you fight this dude, uh, go ahead and just give him the business like or, or, or are they telling you to take off or not really hit this person? Uh, they're telling you to put on the best show you possibly can. Uh, some people put on the best show they possibly can by knocking the shit out of you. I'm sorry, I don't know if I can swear on this or not. No, you can but, cuss uh, as fuck. Listen, you can cuss the much as fuck as much as you want a motherfucking cuss. We don't give a fuck. Hell yeah. All right. I was worried if I could say why the fuck word. So, all right, cool. Um, but some people wrestle by, sh by beating the crap out of you. Some people are stiffer, as we call it, and that's fine by me. I give it just as good. Um, but some people... Try and pull it a little bit more. And then you can see 
Sometimes it looks great, other times it looks horrible, and that's why we have, want to make sure we do the best we can and make as much contact. As saying that, now saying that, have you ever had anybody that, and I'm sure it probably happened, that you got somebody that's really got some real life beef and they want to put some extra shit on it and it ends up being a real live like fight, like brawl fight. Like this ain't no wrestling no more. Fuck that, we passed the wrestling. Like I'm really about to fucking kill that- that's a good question. That that means has anybody ever really tried to take liberties out on you on the ring? Uh, I, I actually, most people don't hate me very much. I'm actually a pretty friendly guy, and I pretty much don't give a shit about oh, what people are. think about me. So uh, most people don't have any beef with me to take out on. I have been stiffed many, many a times, which shit happens because we've really got to make contact because you're not going to believe it like – uh, if we did the same thing as what Tom Cruise does and they just throw the punch and you're seven feet away, but the camera angle shows it so it looks great, well, there's people all the way around us and we're live. We have to make contact. I don't get the chance to throw a punch like I do in movies and it'd be two feet from me. It'd be fine. I have to knock you. Um, and unfortunately, that's the truth of it. Um, and we have people that work great and other people that don't. So, uh, but you feel it. You feel it pretty good. <laughs> How's you, how are you feeling right now? What injury are you working with? Um, I think I tore something in my other ankle, not the one that I broke. Um, so I have to wrap that whenever I do athletic activity. Uh, but normally it's all right. Then those broken ribs I broke in August. Um, broken ribs, they say it takes about eight weeks to heal if you're not doing anything. Well, I just bought a second house, so I'm building – my second, my building it like from the ground up. So all this was not the way it looked now. And I had to keep my TV contract in tow with AAA in Mexico. So uh, I wrestled a few matches with broken ribs and uh, uh, didn't help. So every time you fall down, you reset everything. Every time you fall down, it's just like taking a hit. And so uh, still working with that made it take a little bit longer to heal than I'd like, but now you know. Now, I David, guess. you know you you know I like to wreak havoc, so I like to I ask questions as the devil's advocate, so to speak, and I ask the shit that people don't like to talk about. So, having said that, you've and you know you have taken on injuries. We all know that in across every board of sports in this country, whether it be football, basketball, baseball, wrestling, whatever, even cycling. Steroids has been injected in every sport in this country. Uh, what is the deal in wrestling uh, as far as the taboo, anabolic deal in wrestling? Has that, have you come across that? Have you used that? Are you a part of that? Do you guys use that to, to heal injuries, get stronger, get better for your matches? What's, what's the deal with that? It's definitely in professional wrestling and such as different levels of professional wrestling. It's everywhere. So I know some of my friends have uh, been, uh, been using that to help their careers, either to look better or to get past injuries better. Uh, some of my friends completely refuse to do it. Uh, so I say it's, up, it's completely up to them. It's a personal decision by, that, by them. Um, I know places like the WWE, they have testing where supposedly you're not allowed to use that. I'm sure there's ways around that testing. And it's the same, same testing as the NFL, uh, that the NFL has on their guys. Um, but when, hey, there's a surprise screen testing coming, and we tell you about it two weeks before. Mm. Okay, it's not that surprise. Right. Uh, but... But you get, it's out there. I ran into it. Um, definitely, it's rampant in pro wrestling, just like it is in every single sport. Um, some people use it. Some people are against it. Have you run into it in Lucha? I know of people. The, the, um, now, I'm not, I'm not trying to get you to, like, say some shit to, to get you in trouble or nothing like that. Hard. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, man, it is what it is. What it is. Uh, do you think that it would help that – do you think that, that anabolics actually help enhance a sport? Uh, because, one, I don't know much about Lucha. not saying that everybody does it, but do you think that that would help bring Lucha up to the forefront if you guys were more jacked and rocked up and whatever and, and knowing that that is a part of it? Uh, do you think that would make Lucha more mainstream if it isn't now? 
Um, I wouldn't think so. For some people, it would make their careers better for, oh, I have a better physique now, or I have more, I'm more able to go when I'm in the squared circle. So for some individuals, it would help there. But as a roster as in the whole, that's kind of one thing that's interesting about Lucha is we got guys that you don't normally see in these big stages that are jacked and perfected, but they can wrestle. A lot of places, there's these jack guys that care that are straight from the bodybuilding world and just never figured out how to wrestle yet. So, but in, in Lucha Underground, you have guys that don't, maybe don't quite look like the bodybuilt gods um, of some places, but they're able to do and tell a better story in the ring than the good guys who aren't there. So, do I think it'll help some wrestlers? Possibly, but again, how do you tell someone who doesn't want to do it to do it? Um, to help them. It's a personal choice by those people who do do it. And uh, I don't want to be part of any group that forces somebody to do it if they don't want to. Makes sense. I mean, I can, I can definitely respect that. I don't, I'm, I'm with you on that aspect. I think it's a personal, uh, a personal choice. And now, I mean, things are so, things are so readily available to anyone now and wide open. Back maybe 15, 20 years ago, it was so taboo, like, oh, my God, nobody ever talks about, you know, some anabolic that you can take by mouth or inject it. But don't even talk about it. But now it's almost like, um, you know, I know that you're doing it because it's a part of the sport. It is what it is. So, uh, no, I, I think that's social media, too, and just the society we're in now. I get more questions literally from 16, 17 year old people at the gym saying, what, what cycle do you use? No, they don't care about diet. They don't give a fuck about what your training's like. It's what cycle do you use? And then you say, how old are you? 17. Why would you even be thinking about that? <laughs> right. But that's a whole different conversation we can end up having, man. That's a whole different series. Yeah. That's, a, that's on another, that's on another playing field. Let, let's rattle off some of these Q and a questions for Monty. Ready, Monty? This yeah, is from sure, the sure, yeah, Underground yeah. family. Mario wants to know what's your favorite movie and why. Uh, I don't even have a real favorite movie. Um, I have movies that I watch in the moments of I feel like watching a shitty movie or I feel like watching a funny movie. There's one movie that sticks out. It's called Kung Fury on Netflix. If you watch that, it's like an 80s ripoff of just cheesy, stupid, stupid stuff. I related to Sharknado, but it's hilarious. Um, so maybe I'll go with that, but I don't really have a favorite movie. I'm in the big in the superhero stuff. Um, Santiago, Brian Mongoya, he's a, he's a cool dude. He's a very, a regular we see all the time at Lucha. Santiago wants to know, what do you love about and plan to succeed in Lucha Underground? What do I love about? I love the community. I love that you can say, hey, these questions came from the Lucha Underground family. Um, it's not family. It's a family, actually. It feels like one, even in the locker room. And I hope this doesn't change here. And of course, things could always, but last three seasons, the locker room is just like this. Um, I still talk to them. We still talk regularly. We're, we're boys. And it's not, I got to fight for my spot. I'm not going to, I don't want you to succeed because then I can succeed. Everyone with Lucha, you can have a turn in the spotlight. And it's not one person that has to do things by themselves. It's a collective team to make Lucha underground best. I got, yeah, I, got, I, got I got a secondary question. Actually, I got several questions for you. But first, um, when you're not doing Lucha, what are you, what are you doing outside? What is your secondary job outside of Lucha? If there is one, what do you do other than the wrestling? I used to be a stockbroker for a brokerage firm. Um, and now I'm acting and doing these supplements here full time. So that's what I'm doing now with all the rest of my time is, is being on a movie set or helping people get in better shape. Secondary question, and this is a two-part. Um, you, can, you can answer these in any order that you choose. But this comes from my man. This comes from my man, Send to be Fat, first. Uh, how much do you deadlift? And second, do you wipe front or back? Front or back? Oh, I guess two people do it that way. <laughs> I've never, ever gotten that question in a podcast. So, boom, or any ever, ever. So, awesome on the originality points. Um, I don't max out on deadlift. Again, I'm more of a guy who will uh, you do and get on there do 15 to 20 to 25 reps. So, I actually haven't deadlift maxed in 
since high school. So, and that was unfortunately a little bit longer. Uh, as far as front or back, I didn't even, I think I'd screw that up if I went from the front. That would just mess me up. <laughs> I, just, I got these long wingspan arms. I could get around there. It's just, I think I'd screw that up if I went from the front. It'd be a shitty situation. You, I, I gotta laugh because that sin to be fat is my training partner. And dude, if you know Damien, Damien got stupid questions like that all day long. You got any more questions from Damien, Kev? Uh, not that I. No, that was it. Okay, here's one. Uh, Michael Roses from the Lucha Underground family wants to know who is your dream opponent. Ooh, that's a hard one because there's so many guys I want to go out there to tell a different type of story. There's not one story I want to tell. So let's um, break it down by style. Let's go hardcore, high flying, break it down, wrestling standpoint. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Hardcore, hardcore. straight stiff style. Let's bring on Pentagon. Let's take Pentagon on. Let's see how hardcore he really is. If everyone loves Pentagon so much, I like being the hated guy. And yes. just to straighten that out. Uh, I would really like to work for character wise. There's a guy named Dalton Castle in the ROH. I would just, he's, he goes as the peacock and I'm the moth. So the peacock versus the moth sounds like a hilarious thing to promote and have some fun with. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. And, uh, hmm. as far as just overall, there is so many guys out there just wrestle. Uh, I want to for fun, just for, my since we're boys and haven't had a chance to i'd love to wrestle paul london okay especially in lucha underground he's uh, from the Mont, the rabbit tribe and uh we could play some have some fun with that uh marty skrull is someone that i would really like to wrestle he's the villain so let's see who can out villain each other do you have any aspirations of moving past lucha and maybe hitting that mainstream wcw w WF, the rock level, the, you know, Undertaker level, the, you know, that type of atmosphere. Do you, do you aspire to move up into that or is Lucha where you want to stay for good? Uh, I'd say never say never. Um, but to be a professional wrestler, wrestler is not my aspiration for my full-time career. Um, I love the fact in Lucha Underground, I get to act and show my acting jobs. I love being you know, on set. Um, like I said, I got a Space Odyssey coming up. I got uh, another movie where I, I'm an MMA trainer uh, coming up. Um, I love being in the movie side of things. Wrestling, you got a, you have a shelf life. No matter what supplements you're taking or what you're doing through your body, you got a shelf life. And I don't want to be the 60, 70 year old guy who didn't do anything else except for wrestle. Yes, but I don't. I think there's other ways to do it by instead of just going to the WWE. So, so would it be fair to say that re that the Relucha Underground is kind of like a stepping stone for you to get, I guess, into maybe that big blockbuster movie that that you're aspiring to? Because obviously, you don't want to do small little tidbits here and there. You would like to maybe co-star with a Tom Cruise or co-star with a you know Jake Gyllenhaal or whatever. You might want to hit one of them blockbusters. So, would that be fair to say that that has a actually opened up that avenue for you? Absolutely. Um, I was just in the latest Adam Sandler movie. I was uh, wrestling with a guy named Terry Crews. Hopefully people know him. He's a oh, yeah, we know Terry Crews. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I love Terry Crews. But, yeah, because I've been doing this for so many years, um, it's opened up my avenue. So I was able to do the Adam Sandler movie. Um, I was able to work with Terry Crews. I was able to work with him um, in several scenes. So it's really fun to be able to have those opportunities that I wouldn't have without Lucha Underground. So if I go that route of, like you say, a next level, um, then that I feel like would take away from my, my supplements that I'm doing, my acting, and then wrestling, it would just shorten everything down to just wrestling. And I don't want to just wrestle. I want to do more. I want to be able to be able to walk with number one by the time I'm 40 years old. Um, but number two, wrestling is a piece of my life. I don't want it to be my entirety. Speaking of, how, how old are you? I'm 32. Oh, man. So, yeah, I mean, everybody keeps saying 40, man. You better get off of 40, man. We ain't old, goddamn. We just experienced <laughs> That That actually leads to great to this one right here. Mallory, your super fan, the mothhead of all mothheads. Mallory wants to know is, 
where do you see yourself in 10 years? That was a great lead in. Um, actually in 10 years, I have big goals. So I got them written out. I plan on, I, I have a goal written down to be a millionaire by 35 and things are looking pretty good nice. going in the right direction. Um, so that's one of my goals is, um, getting these supplements out to help with that, being on a big, um, movies movie set doing that what happened to you see i really want to do a scene with ryan reynolds because that'd be fun as hell um and sandra bullock because i really have a, a crush like crazy on sandra bullock <laughs> and i got a personal question for you um yeah. and have you wrestled kevin cross Ke kevin is a good friend of both of us and i talk to kevin as much as i talk to monty have i have you not been wrestled kevin Cross. i've been in there with so many locker rooms with him and some of the shows with him, but never been able to step in the ring. Uh, we, we're going to have to change that because I'm going to promote that shit on Instagram myself. I, and and I want to hear in L.A. so I can go. Not in Utah or something, man, or Vegas. <laughs> but, I okay. Go down there. Now, let's wrap up this show, right? The floor is all yours. What would you like to say? What would you like to promote? Put it all out on the line. Anything off your chest. It's all you. Number one, first. Thanks so much for having me on. I know you guys' time is valuable, and I like thanks so much for having me on and to spend that time with me. Um, for you fans, thank you much. Without you, guys, I wouldn't be able to do anything that I do, whether it be the supplements, the wrestling, or the movies. Because when you guys are saying, hey, put him in this movie, or hey, I need help with losing weight, or getting better sleep, or getting better energy, Without you guys saying that stuff, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. So thank you, fans, number one. Um, follow me at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at Martin Casals. All of it on there. If you don't know how to spell it, go Google Marty the Moth, and you'll be able to find it. It's on my uh, website, martincasals.com. Check me out there, because that's where all my stuff's going to be. I'm putting out some sweet content, making some skits um, on my YouTube channel as well. Um, on my channel, I have... My supplements. So if you need a multivitamin, I got it. Again, use his life as long as you actually feel it. I, if you try to get in shape, I have this Check Yourself Fitness group. Get in shape with me. I'm giving away money and free supplements. So get in shape with me for, with, for V-Slam. If you drink energy drinks, stop it. You're an idiot. I have this V3. I drank five energy drinks a day, and I had almost killed me. So I drink this. It's 100% natural vegan, all that good shit, gluten-free. I got stuff to help you with your brain. I got stuff to help you with your joints. I use this so I can help myself wrestle. I got shit for Lord that makes you feel good. So fucking use it. Um, there we go. So that's me. I have my stuff. With, I have my acting, so check out my movies. But either way, find me on social media or my website. I'm one that will write you back if you write me a message. Uh, so hit me back. Without you, I'm nothing. So thank you for being there. And the guys, thanks for having me on. Oh, thank you, because we know your time is valuable too, man. And I, I've been wanting to do this with you for, since Lucha Underground Season 2. For those that don't know, I'm a security guard there, so I, I get to know all these wrestlers very well. Some I just stay in good friendships with. Marty's definitely one that I talk to on a regular basis, as well as Kevin Cross and Thunder Rosa. They're just really genuine, good people. So I really appreciate you taking your time to come here. Hey, thanks much for having me on. So and I'm going to put all your stuff. info yeah. on the bottom. Say that again? Yes. Find all my info here on the bottom. And thanks to David Goyce and Rough House TV because we're going to have some fun. <laughs> well, there it is, guys, man. I hope you all enjoyed this thorough interview uh, with Martin Casals. Uh, and those of you that do not, have any knowledge as I didn't, but now I'm more knowledgeable about uh, Lucha Underground. Uh, please go check him out. Uh, David will put all the links uh, in the box below. And he's putting on some kind of mask. <laughs> Mark, what you, got, what you got right there, man? What, what's, what's going on with the mask, bro? I'm trying to get this Drago mask on, and it ain't working. Ah! <laughs> anyway, man, there it is, guys. That's my boy, DG, holding it down real hard and heavy for the West Coast hitters. Uh, sitting here with Martin Kraus, Kasaus uh, of Lucha Underground. I'm your boy, Kevin DeVeck. This is Rough House TV. We just got done killing that, man. If you guys like this video, by all means, man, please 
hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and click on the bell right next to that so that you get full notification when we drop that hot ass content, baby, like we just did. Again, thank you guys for checking in. And we are out. It's all right. I'm just a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs>